So in the last part of the series, I enabled the touch inputs on the screen so that the UI would actually react to user inputs. Um, but I kind of left you there with a cliffhanger because so far, even though the UI reacts and users can switch between screens and you know enable and disable those toggle buttons here, um, the functions don't do anything. So they, they don't have any effect. You know, before I begin, you might notice that I actually changed this a bit. I added this um, toggle here, and I also added a panel that you just, you can't see it right now. It looks like this. Right. And also this start update button and this progress bar. And I would like to link these um, to the Arduino and add events so that, for example, when users actually, when a user clicks this button here, the start update button, something actually happens on the Arduino. But let me start by modifying the UI a bit. You know, whenever a user clicks this button, this progress should increment and this button should decrement the progress again. Um, but make sure to, as always, give these meaningful names and you will see uh, why that makes sense later. And okay, so, so far this is nothing new. Whenever a user clicks this toggle and it's on, so it's active, an LED should light up, right? And vice versa. So when this is in the off position, the LED should be off as well. So start by selecting the toggle and I scroll all the way down to the events. All right, so let's get rid of this. Let's add an event and just call this uh, on LED toggle change. And here the trigger itself doesn't matter. I mean, it, it should matter, but it doesn't because a uh, square line, you will see later why, but it's square line studio doesn't seem to properly export this. So we will change that later anyway in the code. As an action, choose call function, add, and then add a function here, which I mean, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, for now, let's just do um, on LED toggle, actually, let's just call it LED toggle change handler, and make sure that you do not check this. So we want to export the function and again, I will show you later why. And then repeat the same for the start update. So let me do this again for here. Again, it doesn't matter too much because I will replace these anyway. Just make sure to save the, um, the project. And if you haven't changed anything, you should be good by just clicking this export UI files here. And that was everything that you needed to do within Squareline Studio. Okay, so before I show you how to make the Arduino interact with the UI and vice versa, I would like to show you three of the main use cases that I consider practical. Let me reset this real quick. So I already compiled everything that I'm about to show you and it's running on the Arduino right now. What I think is maybe the, the use case that most of you guys will be interested in is make the UI trigger some action on the Arduino. So in this case, it will be, even though it says LED flashing, it will turn on and off this LED depending on the toggle state here. So if I just activate that, you can see that the LED comes on. And if I turn it off again, LED goes off, right? Very simple, but it demonstrates the first main use case. And secondly, um, sometimes it's useful to activate or inactivate or show and hide certain UI elements from within the code, so programmatically. So if I click this Start Update button, a timer will start on the Arduino and it will just display this overlay for a couple of seconds and then hide it again. And thirdly, we would often like to change UI elements based on what the program is doing. So I can imagine that, for example, reading sensor data with the Arduino is a very common use case in most projects. And I can also imagine that you would like to display the results on the UI. So in this case, it's just this progress bar. And by clicking these buttons, the Arduino code actually changes the value of this. It's not something that I implemented in Squareline. And I guess these are the three main use cases that most of you will be interested in. So let's see how uh, we can actually make the UI 
perform these actions. This is the folder generated by Squareland project, uh, by Squareland Studio, and the libraries is where Squareland puts all the libraries, but also where it, where it actually packages the UI code into source files, right? So if you go in here, you can actually find the screens, and these here will have the same names as you assign to them in uh, Squareland Studio. So this is another reason why it makes sense to give the, the um, elements meaningful names. So in my case, everything I'm interested in is actually located on the settings screen. So let me just bring this up real quick. And we can see this is the code file generated by um, Squareline Studio. And if we scroll all the way down, we will find the events that we assigned to the objects earlier in this video. So this one, the settings back button, this is already there. Okay, this is needed for navigating back from the settings screen to the main menu. However, these four events here, they are new. And this is also what I meant when I told you earlier that um, it doesn't really matter what type of event you select in Squareline Studio. It's just going to assign LV event all to all of the events for whatever reason. So this is not even aware of the type of event. And this is not the only file. If you go back out to the source folder and click on this events.c file, and if we just have a look at this, we can find the generated functions here. And as you can already see here, I already tried to use just simple serial print line calls, but it doesn't work. So you cannot, you cannot use these generated functions to actually trigger Arduino events. So what I'm going to do is a little workaround. I will just leave these generated functions in here in the events file. And then I'm going to cut these events, all of them except for the one for the back button because that is actually handled by Squareline Studio. So I'm just going to remove these and I'm going back to the Arduino Studio here. Uh, Arduino IDE, I mean. God, I'm getting really confused with all these names. So either way, confusion aside, let's see. We should find the update, or I mean the setup function. And this is where, uh, where um, it initializes the UI. And right after this initialization call, we just paste in these event handler assignments. And you can already see that, again, assigning the UI elements with meaningful names is really helpful here. Because we can see this is the event for the toggle button that turns the LED on and off. So the first the first parameter of this add event callback function is the actual UI element you want to link with the event. Right, the second one is the function that LVGL should actually call when the user triggers an event. So in this case, it is just this on LED toggle change that I already wrote. I'm going to explain what it does in a second. And here, I don't want just about any event to trigger the callback function. I just want that to be specific events. And for that, we can look at the documentation here of LVGL. And then just kind of scroll down to find a list of possible events. So here we see input device events, and I just want this event here. So the LV event pressed, that's the only one I want use to fire this event. So LV event pressed. That should be no pressed. Oh, that's correct. And null, so this first parameter I just pass in null, it would be, you could use it to add additional um, parameters to this callback function, but I'm not using that. And I will just use this event pressed for all of them and just real quickly go through and update the callback function names. So this is, so we have the on update button that goes in here. And I will have to define these in a second. I will do that on the fly just to show you how to, how to do that. Um, but let's go over these, um, these handler functions real quick. So the on LED toggle change function here. Well, let me actually go up here first. So I define an LED pin, and I also have this LED state variable. It's a volatile Boolean. You actually don't want to execute a lot of code or many lines of code in callback functions. It's just considered bad practice because callback handlers should be as quick to return as possible. Even though this is probably not an interrupt, wouldn't do any harm to kind of stick to the best practice guidelines. Uh, either way, what I do is you can see that by default, this event pointer here or well, our pointer gets passed into this function to an object of this type LV event T. 
and from that type you can actually get the target so that is the ui element that triggered the event so in this case that will be the toggle and i think all of the ui elements actually have a state assigned to them so that state can contain multiple flags like hidden or in this case we just well, i just check whether it whether it's activated so whether it's checked or not and you can check for certain flags with lv obj has state and i just store that in the led state variable here so in the end the led state variable just represents whether the toggle button is enabled or disabled and this is all that the um, the callback handler does and if i just go down a bit you can see that the actual led switching happens in the loop so this is just a standard function and i just put that in here so we just digital write to the led pin whatever the led state is and on the update button click again we have the same event or, the, or pointer to the event and if the update whoops if the update is not running i set the update start millis to the current time set the update running and then again handle um, the actual hiding or showing of that panel in here in a custom function within the loop so here we just again check whether the update is running and then this is just to see whether uh, five seconds have elapsed so if if the user started the update five seconds ago it will just add the hidden flag to the pop-up panel and it will clear the hidden flag from the update buttons in the other case so if the update is not yet finished all i do is clear the hidden flag from the spinner panel that makes it not hidden anymore so it shows it and i add the flag to the update button so to effectively hide the update button and now for the plus and minus button below the actual progress bar what i will do is i'm just going to define a few values here so i will just do bar min set that to zero and define bar max this is not necessarily you know it's not important to do that but i just kind of think it's i mean why not you know bar step set that to 10 and then I will have a volatile unsigned int uh, progress bar value equals zero. So we just set that to zero here. For the next thing, um, let me actually go into the documentation here. So this is just the documentation for the progress bar. We can see that we can set the range here with this call. And let me just do that in the setup real quick. So this is just UI update progress bar. And we want to set it to bar min and bar max. Oops, there we go. And then, right, I need to define these two functions. So what I do is um, on progress increment, oh, that's the wrong one, on progress decrement. And here we have on progress increment. And I will just generate two functions up here real quick. So this is a static void on progress increment. And we have the LV event T pointer, right? And then all I do in here is if progress bar, progress bar value, I mean, I don't even think you need to do this. This is just, um, you know, going extra, making extra sure that nothing bad happens here. So then we set progress bar value value plus equals bar step. Right, and this is very easy. We just copy this, put it down in here. And we just call this on progress decrement is greater than min. Then we do minus equals. And again, this is just a very quick and dirty way of doing it, but it's good enough for just demonstration purposes here. And like before, I will try to keep these handler functions as short as possible. So I only set a single volatile variable here. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to communicate this change to the actual part. So if we just look at the code here, we can see that there is this LV bar set value function that we can use for that purpose and let me also set the initial value to zero so we just use ui update progress bar set this to zero without any animation 
and then I just do the same here but all we do in here is use progress bar value there we go and let's actually hope that this compiles and let's test whether everything works um, if I just click on the settings again if I can make it react I think if I were to actually pull off the screen protector it would make it a little easier but let's see whether the other functions still work so that's still functions so that's the first task accomplished start update UI updates from within the program perfect and then let's see yep there you go this also updates so I think I think this demonstrates pretty much all the scenarios you might want to or all the tasks you might want to accomplish again we can make the arduino react by physically turning off pins just by clicking the ui right uh, we can make the ui react to the arduino which this demonstrates yeah and i mean some of these things show up on top but that's fine and again this also we can communicate status or whatever back to the ui again from the arduino anyway let's not make this video longer than it has to be i think it's already pretty long as as before i hope you enjoyed it i hope you find this video helpful please let me know if you have any tips or tricks or anything else that you would like to share with us and other than that good luck with your project and thanks for watching